Pictures presents... The police have no leads, and the killer is still out there. You scream like a girl. The comedy. Careful, it's on kind of loose. That's really starting to get on my nerves. That dares to give scary movies... Hey, look at me! I'm in the face! The backhand. What you doing, man? That's my dad. Come on. CPR, man. I saw him Baywatch. Did you lose something there, bud? Idle Hands. Welcome back to the 12th Annual Halloween Special. Tonight we're talking about a movie that's become quite the cult classic over the years. When this first came out, I heard absolutely nothing but bad things about it. Even at my young age, I had heard the movie was really bad. How did I know that? I read the TV Guide a lot back then. My parents had a subscription to it. And the TV Guide often assigned star ratings to movies. Idle Hands was not considered a good film. This was absolutely eviscerated by critics. And it's become one of those movies that over the years people just keep recommending and recommending to the point where everybody who talks about the movie likes the movie and then suddenly the conversation around it is entirely positive and that's how movies are reclaimed. I mean, The Sandlot was like that when I was a kid. It didn't really get that great of reviews from critics. It didn't light the box office on fire, but it's now considered a classic. I mean, when I go to my neighborhood Regal, lately they've been doing this quote thing before a movie starts and The Sandlot is one of the movies they quote right now. The right generation for a movie sometimes ends up reclaiming it years later. Maybe they weren't quite old enough to have a public voice yet and eventually when that happens, suddenly, the movie is talked about in a much more respected light. And you look back on the reviews when it came out and you think to yourself, what the hell were they thinking? Idle Hands is about 17-year-old slacker Anton, who wakes up one Halloween morning to discover that both of his parents have been turned into two headless Halloween decorations. After speaking to his equally irresponsible friends, he discovers that his right hand has a bloodthirsty mind of its own and is hell-bent on wreaking havoc whether he likes it or not. And it was directed by Rodman Flender, and years later in interviews, Seth Green has talked about the fact that everybody who was making this movie had a different idea of the type of movie they were making. The actors, the writers, the director, the producers, the studio, everybody was trying to make a different movie, and of course it all hinges on test screenings at the end of the day with some films like this. Which is probably why Idle Hands feels like a lot of different movies. It's a stoner movie, it's an undead zombie film, it's a murder mystery, it's a coming-of-age romance, and it's a Halloween-set horror film about a possessed hand. What I find interesting about movies that are later reevaluated, like Idle Hands or even Jennifer's Body, a lot of them do tend to lean towards comedy. I think people have a really hard time getting comedies that are subversive or very, very, very weird. The film Grandma's Boy has gotten a very similar treatment, hated initially and eventually loved. Because movies like that tend to be slightly ahead of their time. They're very much so of the time, but not everyone has caught up to the fact that they are so up to date. Jennifer's body being so heavily bisexual, for instance, before people were really ready to accept something like that in a mainstream horror comedy. And I'm not trying to convince you that this is Shakespeare or anything. What Idle Hands is is just very fast-paced, extremely entertaining, very funny, and kind of stupid in the best way. I want to talk about Devin Sawa. He is an incredibly underrated actor, but specifically in this movie, he gives a fantastic performance. He is so physical here and gives himself completely over to the idea that his right hand has total control over him. Even scenes like this where he's spraying the soap onto his mouth after he tries to smoke nutmeg and oregano, <laughs> that's real soap. He improv that on the spot. He's such a phenomenal actor, he doesn't get enough credit. The best way to describe Idle Hands is what if the pen is blue scene from Liar Liar? The pen is blue. The pen is blue! Was like an entire movie. In fact, I wouldn't even be surprised if some studio exec or even the writer saw that scene and went, oh. That should be a horror film, except the whole movie. The movie also has quite a bit of fun lines that I have loved to revisit over the years. Like, for instance, this one. With the killer on the loose, you can't rule out murder. What killer? Don't you watch the news? I hate that fucking show. And potentially my favorite. Oh, gross! Maybe we should clean it first. Hey, yeah! And while we're at it, we can clean the whole fucking house! It's rare that you get a movie that has some legitimate idea of building suspense around gore. There's a lot of really gory scenes in this movie. It almost feels 
Argento-esque at times, that has scenes where they're talking to Eldon Henson's decapitated head, Vivica A. Fox actually tracking this thing all across the United States map, realizing that it makes a pentagram, our three leads rocking out to Rob Zombie's Dracula on TV, while simultaneously having happy Gilmore-level slapstick involving a cat. <laughs> And it was also filmed in the same neighborhood as Carpenter's Halloween. So Idle Hands has a lot going for it. But yes, it is kind of stupid, but that's also what I love about it. And it does feel like a studio and a producer and the writers and the director and the actors couldn't really figure out if they were all making the same movie. And it also feels like it had one test screening too many, to the point where somebody said the wrong thing during a focus group, and somebody in the position of power went, ah, that and then they just kind of like went and fussed around with it. There's a little bit of that going on, but the movie has endured over the years, and I hear it recommended more and more and more, and I remember back to the first time I ever was aware of this movie. I was standing in line at Blockbuster. I must have been 12, maybe 13 years old, and saw the VHS tape in front of me right at the cash register, and I thought to myself, what is that? Turned it around, rated R, oh, can't get it. I don't know what I was renting, it might have been an N64 game, and then seeing the poor rating in the TV guide made me not watch this movie for a long time. So if you want to have a really good, fun, stupid time that feels super lightweight, Idle Hands is the perfect movie for you this Halloween. Guys, thank you so much for continuing to watch the 12th annual Halloween special. I'll have more videos coming for you very soon, and if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.